Hey, what's up, everybody? Ryan McDonald here, and I am standing by with Ellie Noir, as you can tell, with the, the, the fedora donned and the, uh, the long coat. Uh, but it, but it obviously disappeared. Whatever, it's like super hot in the studio, so I'm gonna take this off. But I will not waste too much of your time. As uh, Ellie Noir, uh, if you like us, we've been waiting a long time for it. Today is the day it's out. I'll give you a little bit of the t a little, just a little taste. Don't want to spoil too much. Uh, the story is obviously supremely important to Ellie Noir. We're gonna give you a little taste today, a little bit of the tutorial uh, missions as you get into the game, the very first part, and then we'll jump ahead just for a little bit to one of the later missions, uh, Black Caesar, which is the first Vice mission. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, let the game uh, do the talking. The first thing you'll see after we get into this is the selection that you have between a new game, continuing game, resuming. We're just going to go straight up new, so that way you guys can, can hear the tale from the start. We'll, we'll not skip the tutorial, so that's what, something we want to look at. Um, and yeah, I'll be quiet. Listen in. A city on the verge of greatness. A new type of city, based not on the man, but on the automobile, the car, the symbol of freedom and vitality. Where every man can own his own home, and have room to breathe, and not be overlooked by his neighbors. A city where a man's home is his castle. A quarter acre of the dream made possible by victory. The city of opportunists. The city of dreams. Where Hollywood will shape the thoughts and desires of the entire planet. A city of pioneers. City of Dreamers. A city of undercurrents, where not everything is as it seems. A 20th century city that will become a model for the world. A city that has no boundaries, that will stretch as far as the eye can see. So there you have the intro screen that dumps us right in to the business, which you'll see come up here. Obviously, the, the vocals... In the Marine Corps, you awesome. deal with the chain of command. Mistakes get made, but you deal with them. You know what you're fighting for, and that you're on the same team. Dealing with corruption is like chasing shadows. You never know whether the guy you're talking to is on the path, or whether it's your partner, or maybe even the watch commander. So who do you trust, Cole? I made up my mind a long time ago. KGPL calling car 14 Adam. 14 Adam, come in. Go ahead, KGPL. 14 Adam, see the detective an ambulance shooting at 6th and Industrial Street. Get a 16 William request uniform assistance for an evidence search. 14 Adam, go to. Roger, 14 Adam en route. Right, so the first time we get to uh, take control of the game, as you can see. Here we go again. They don't request uniforms for an evidence search unless there's some kind of catch. Ever the optimist. From the beam of sunshine himself. Have a little conversation on the way like you have seen in previous Rockstar games. Floyd Rose, homicide. You might back up? Yes, sir. Phelps and Dunn, Wilshire Division. We had a shooting took place down this alleyway. We have the Vic, Scooter Payton, a Negro male bagged up and on his way to Central Morgue. Witness says a tall white guy, our shooter, put two in the Vic's head and then threw his piece. I need you guys to try and recover the gag. You want us to look anywhere in particular? Give it your best shot, guys. The dead guy's a low life. 
I'm not expecting any miracles here. And if we recover the weapon? Bag it and return it to technical services. You hurry it up, Floyd. We I'm got places here. to be. Happy hunting. This is a fist hump. Just going through the motions. Probably right. Let's just get it over and done. All right, have it your way. We'll search right up to the back wall. If you still don't come up with anything, come find me and we'll talk it out. Two heads are always better than one. So yeah, so this game starts off a little slow, just kind of introduces the control schemes. And it's like, all right, let's just walk around and find something. So Look at this junk. If you can read up in the top left corner, it might be kind of small on your screen. It basically is saying there's a couple indicator, indicators that'll help you in your investigation. So uh, for right now, I can feel this vibration my hitting my controller every time trash. I walk over this spot. And you can hear this chime, which is indicating that there is something of interest. So we can hit the X button. I'm sorry. Hit the circle button here and we'll look at this. Nothing significant. What have you got, Phelps? Anything? It's just a bottle. Keep looking. Let's go look where the, where the action happened. Jesus. Cole, come take a look at this. Shooter put him up against the wall and blew his brains out. Hell of a way to go. Doesn't really matter how you go. Once you're gone. <laughs> Don't get all deep on me, Phelps. So if you're keeping track where you're looking for this gun. I tell you, I'm jinxed. I always get landed with this crap. Ralph, there's something on the rooftop. How the hell did you see that? Reflection in the window. Looks like it might be our weapon. I'm gonna see if I can find a way up there. All right, don't hurt yourself. Just gotta figure out how to get up there. And I think there's a pipe that I can use. Climb up. The gun's up on the roof, right? Subtle lighting to, to signify. So we need to find a way up. Partner, early on in the game, kind of points you in that direction too. What kind of chumps do these homicide guys think we are? So right here, when I'm, you know, whenever you pick up any object, you can see the text up in the top left telling you that if you use the uh, left analog stick Smith and Wesson and hold it S7. while it's vibrating, it'll let you zoom in on an object. You can also, you know, do secondary investigations on objects. So I'm going to further investigate this by pushing the button so he flips it open as you can see two rounds fired and instead of dropping it down a drain our shooter hoists it up here interesting guy we should follow up on this now before the perp tries to leave town apparently did not worry about fingerprints too much back then and I think that should be oh yeah this right now so the other thing I should mention as we we're getting gun, down here. Cole. Let's take it back to Central. We could get a commendation. We could show some initiative, Ralph, and see if we can come up with an owner. That's a long shot, Cole. It's a pretty fancy gun. You know a local gun store? Sure. There's a place a couple of blocks from here. So the thing I was going to mention while we make our way back to the car to uh, get over to the gun shop to see if we can track down the owner of the gun is that keep in mind of the time period that this game takes place in. So, no harm you know, in back in the day, people were uh, you know, there's a slightly different culture in America in terms of, uh, you, can't wait to get out of that uniform, can you? you know, some of the ways that people were, you know, spoke about one another and, you know, race, you know, race came up a lot and, and it does come up in this game because it, it does to try to, you know, accurately depict the, the time and the, the sentiment that people had back then. So we're gonna jump over here. So here's one cool thing. So you can, you know, see it says, you know, press the triangle button to enter the vehicle, which, you know, my partner is all cons apparently waiting for me to drive. Uh, in this case, though, I'm gonna hold down the triangle button and 
as you'll see, you uh, this one? I tell him, like, you should drive. And so we're going to go to the gun store. And uh, you, can totally, uh, you can totally drive, obviously, but uh, oh, I think I, uh, this is my notebook. This is where you kind of contain a, a bunch of the information and how you use it to basically talk to people and do you know, interrogations and stuff, which you'll see, but I will uh, you know the way. by you accurately getting my car. So my partner will slide over the driver's side and he will show for me over there. I highly recommend this way of getting around. It's it's fast. It's kind of faster than having to drive most of the time. And for those of you who might be wondering, we are playing right now on the, the PS3 version of the game. Um, but there's a gun store action. Officers Phelps and Dunn. Can you tell us anything about this gun? Smith & Wesson, Model 27, registered Magnum. Chambered for 357, nickel plated with pearl grips. Same gun used by General Patton. <laughs> You're not suggesting he's the owner? No, I'm not. You seem to know a lot about the weapon. I ought to. I sold it. You know this piece will stop a rhino. These babies are only available special order. Here's my Smith & Wesson order book. You mind if I take a look? Be my guest. This is about something bad, right? Model 27 with pearl grips, Cole. You see it on there? Oh, my. Look, yes, he has 27 nickel checkered walnut grip. Uh, nothing there. Let's go over this way. 14. Oh, there we go. There we go. 20, 27 inch. Let's say 27 4 inch barrel. Polished nickel pearls. Yep, that's, that's the one we're looking for. We're in luck. Errol Schroeder, 203 South Glass Street. Ordered the gun in February 46. Thanks, you've been a big help. Anytime. Always happy to help out the LAPD. So, uh, since we call it in, let's see if he's at home. Owning the gun doesn't prove he pulled the trigger. Okay. In for a penny, in for a pound. Lead the way, Gunga Den. This gentleman will drive us again. So if, uh, if, if there are old school so fans of the Trouble Graphics out there, we're in uniform, remember a game called JB's Art Murder Club, which this kind of so. reminds me of in a way. Obviously, you know, true. this is 3D and you drive around and weapon, all kinds of stuff, but ultimately it's, it's you work in clues and talking to people and kind of working with those people. Most of them aren't. That's why they get caught. Two out of every three crimes are done on impulse. Another fact from the Phelps Encyclopedia of Thin Air. You really are full of Obviously, their dialogue as they're driving along is usually pretty awesome. They, they talk about some funny stuff and obviously pretty much relates to what's happening and, uh, and the characters they're dealing with. So, uh, But as we get over to Mr. Uh, I think it's Errol's house to, to find out about the gun that he had and why is this gun a suspected murder weapon? Do you know about this, Schroeder? And that's one, you know, that's one question I know a lot of people ask is like, well, can you go in every building? Uh, I don't know if you saw that sign there, but it said, any door with a gold handle on it. So if you look at this, there's obviously a gold, gold handle on that door, which is one of the doors we can go into. And I guess I should mention that uh, I am taking questions. If you want to send an email to you on the spot at gamespot.com, I'll be looking at those. Schroeder, apartment two. We now know that Schroeder's in apartment two. I can tell you uh, one question that came in from Steve Lynch. Steve wanted to know, can you use the interrogation skills learned in L.A. Noir in real life? So I would say as much as, um, <laughs> kind of, not really, but kind of. You know, it's like if you ever watched uh, Lie to Me, it's like and picked up on some of those lying skills in there or, or the lie detection skills from there. It's a pretty much you know, what you might expect, people looking shifty. Bang on this new door. What do you guys want? I'm Officer Cole Phelps. This is Officer Dunn, Wilshire Division. You're the owner of a Smith & Wesson Model 27, nickel-plated with pearl grips? I might be. What of it? Then you'll be surprised to know that Scooter Payton was murdered tonight with your gun. You're out of your mind. Scooter? 
He works for me. I have that gun here in my drawer. What the fuck is going on here? You're under arrest, Schroeder. Cuff him, Ralph. No way. You're not taking me down for this. That was uh, a very right. bad I'm gonna have to show you what's up. So this is, uh, you hold L2, and you hit the, uh, square. I'm sorry, the X button. Punches, dude. I'm sorry, I really like the melee in this game. Somehow it just feels terribly satisfying when you're jacking dudes. And, uh... Oh, there is a grapple move yet. Oh. Ralph, you all right? I'm fine. I hardly felt it. He's lucky he caught me off guard. Keep an eye on. So Ralph. now we get to. Uh, I'm gonna take a look around. Search this dude's apartment. And you can sometimes pick between objects, as we can do here. So let's take a look at this. It's Dude's got a cigarette butt. <laughs> I'm gonna look at this cup. So a lot of stuff, you know, I shouldn't say a lot of stuff, but yeah, there are tons of objects that, you know, they're just there. So you don't have to, and he kind of gives you vocal cues as to like, I don't think it's gonna help me. Let's go find something that will help him. Well, probably not helpful, this is super awesome. Seems irrelevant. Sometimes, yeah, you see, sometimes you find stuff on the other side, like whether there's something written down or whatever. Not the case here, obviously. Let's see what else. Oh. Circumstantial. Yeah, that's not helpful. Ledger. List of names in a series of numbers. Floyd Rose's name is in this book. Phelps, we can come out of this all bright and shiny with a commendation. Or stick our schlongs in a hornet's nest. Call it in, partner. And leave the book where you found it. Officer Phelps, that's 1247. So you're at the top of the game, you know, not sure who you trust, you know, the cops, you know, this guy on the take or not. So there's obviously some, some questions about trust. But uh, then there's this side storyline that periodically appears. Tell them about your character's backstory. Sons of bitches, get in this line now before I lose my temper. Excuse me, Sergeant, but. Excuse me? Fuck you! You say another word and I'll break your fucking head and have you in the brig. Some of us are here for. I know why you're here, asswipe. I'm having a bad day, Private. Some people don't seem to want to get on this bus. I didn't ask for your help. He didn't ask for your help. Can you believe this guy? Who are you two? Abbott and Costello? We're here for OCS, Sergeant. So it's the three fucking stooges and you're here for OCS. God help this fucking country in the USMC. The Japanese will do the world a favor and kill you quickly. All three of you are on report. What are your fucking names? Phelps. Kelso. Merrill. Any other gentlemen for OCS? OCS is at Elliot. You take the Camp Elliot bus over there. This bus is for MCRD. This bus is for men who want to fight. All right, I guess we'll just go over here. <laughs> so yeah, so obviously some of the dudes, you know, drill started the harsh. People are harsh. People are harsh apparently in the 40s. People were rough. So lots of people actually. Lots of characters you meet are just like, what do you, what do you want? What are you doing? So that was kind of the first look at uh, one of the first tutorial missions. You still haven't seen Fire My Gun. So there's still some stuff that we'll see here. You heard the stories, but you weren't interested. We'll take a look at this one and then we'll. Jump a little bit further ahead so you can see the forces like a little bit was like when you were no city on the not a patrolman. You have to choose sides: a brown paper envelope or a greyhound ticket to Palookaville. The 
saved it only ever in. All units to 211 in progress and shots fired at Westlake saving. All right, now we're talking. 1415 West 3rd Street. Unit to handle identify code 3. We'll take that. It's only a couple blocks from 14 here. Adam calling KGPL. We'll handle the 211. Roger that, 14 Adam. Be advised suspects are armed and dangerous. 211, that is a robbery. Adam on I'm driving. I need to get fast. Your lives are in danger. Did you know it's Cop Week, by the way? 15th through 21st? Straight up, that is real fact. It is Cop Week. Not that the release of Eleanor, I think, happened during Cop Week by, like, you know, on purpose or anything, but. It is Cop Week. What you do during Cop Week? I don't know. Play cop video game. Avoid. No, no. Let's see. All right, we get over here. So this is funny because, like, the. First time I came over here, I did go this back alleyway. Okay. And it kind of didn't work for the cutscene, so here we go. Alright, so now we are on our cover fire action. We got. Oh! Oh yeah, that guy's not gonna kill you. You're not gonna kill you. Try for the front door. Keep your goddamn head down. Use the cover, Phelps. Alright. Oh, that's right. You can do that. We don't know and, how many uh, are in. Right. Oh yeah, I don't want to do that. Slow. Actually, I guess I do. Backup will be here soon. So the R1 button is how you do your cover business. So we're gonna come inside the door. Try not to get away. LAPD, put down your weapons. The bank is surrounded. I'm offering you a chance to stay down. What can I say? That's it? We got them all? I think we got them, Cole. Should be all clear. So here's a little gunplay for you. Lieutenant Hopkins says anytime you reach for the shotguns, you're either going to end up dead or wearing a citation. So I guess it's, it's okay, Ralph. You did well in there. I'm glad you had my back. Man couldn't ask for a better partner. No. All right, so there's a look at uh, two of the early tutorial missions in L.A. Noir. I think it's time to, to jump ahead and check out Black Caesar, which is the first, uh, the first uh, vice case that you come up against. I'll let you guys see this flashback a little bit. This kind of opportunity comes along once in a lifetime, Hank. <laughs> I have to grasp it. You have to survive at first, Cole. Here are the veterans. The Japs love to shoot officers. If I can make a name for myself in this war, my future... Thinking of taking on a company of the Emperor's finest single-handed? You don't seem the Sergeant York type to me. When I need your opinion, Kelso, I'll ask for it. They talk about officers like you in boot camp, Cole. They call it the Custer Syndrome. Guys who go around dreaming of fame and glory and getting all of their men killed in the process. Our duty is to lead, Kelso. And their duty is to die for your wonderful future? So yeah, some, some trouble, war era trouble. All right, let's go ahead and uh, jump out of this business. This is the very first part of the game you just saw. Now we're gonna go ahead and jump a little further ahead uh, so that way we can see what it looks like when you are actual doing your business as a full-fledged uh, detective. So yes, I would like to exit and lose all my progress. And uh, so yeah, so if you're just joining us, we are looking at an L.A. Noir. Uh, we just saw the first about 20 minutes of the game, and now we're going to take a look at one of the later missions. I don't want to spoil really anything because the, the story is super integral, and you know it's really kind of the atmosphere and a lot of the stuff. So. I uh, hope you're enjoying the taste you're getting. Let's go ahead and look at the cases. We'll just load it from here. Um, and I'll scroll quickly through. Let's see. Traffic desk, homicide desk, vice desk. So Black Caesar is the one that we're going to do. And, uh, yeah, so let's check us out. Pretty cool, huh? And it's weird. The, the, the facial thing is really cool. All right. And if you haven't already, you know, I highly suggest checking out Carolyn Pettit's review of uh, L.A. Noir. The video review is really well done as well. Um, got a nine. I've played it a little bit like most of you last night after getting my copy and then a little bit this morning before we started. But largely, I do not know what we'll be doing here. So you will see 
We will learn together. Phelps, welcome to Vice. This is your new partner, Roy Earl. Take a seat. A special request was made to transfer you to add Vice. We need a man with your kind of starch on this desk, son. We have two dead Negroes found in an apartment this morning on Yucca Street. Number 6358, apartment 5. We got better things to be doing than wasting our time on two dead junkies. Did I ask your opinion, detective? Two men dead on U.S. Army issue morphine. That makes it an advice case. Beat it! Yes, sir. You and the lieutenant have some history? You could say that. We used to be partners. So, you're working with the big boys now, Cole? I guess so, Roy. I thought homicide was the primo assignment. That may be the case. I asked for you personally, Phelps. I had to pull a few strings to get you over to advice. How does it feel? The lieutenant seems to think I'm doing okay. Okay? <laughs> Don't get humble on me, Phelps. You're doing great. You're the department pinup boy. War hero and crime fighter. What a combination. I can assure you I'm no war hero detective. And I'm certainly no chauffeur. So you should hop. totally drive where we need to go. You can drive. <laughs> nice car, Roy. Is it department issue? No, this is my sled. You can't be seen slumming it in a gnash if you're in vice calls. Meanwhile, we got needle freaks kissing it goodbye all over Central Avenue. Intriguing. This is always my favorite part when you roll up on the crime scene. Because it's every from every awesome movie you've ever seen where they kind of like stroll up and the guy comes up and hey officer, you know, detectives. As you will see hopefully right here. They really picked a fry shithole for a first date. Lend someone twenty dollars. Well, it it's up the stairs, detectives. Round the corner, last door on the left. I'll talk to you. Can you go door to door? See how many of the neighbors are home. First thing we did once the apartment was secure. Where does the Vicks kept to themselves? Only time anyone ever saw them was when they went to the joint across the road for some soul food. Come on, done. Your show now. Just a little hot footed. Let me through. I just want a quick look at all. Carruthers. Phelps? I've been reassigned to advice. What have we got? Two stiffs. Overdosed. Been dead a couple of days. Government issue morphine. We use the same surrettes in Okinawa. Fucking Negro junkies can't take supply this pure. You know these guys? I know of them. The younger one's a two-bit horn player by the name of Cornell Tyree. The other one works in distribution. Started using a little too much of his own product and Jack D took exception. He wasn't born that ugly. His name's Lamont. Tyrone Lamont. So who's supplying the drugs? That's easy. Whoever knocked off the wharves in San Pedro. Jack Dragna, Mickey Cohen, dope's been all upside down ever since Jimmy Utley started the long walk at Quentin. You talk about it like it's a system. It was a system, but those days are long gone. We are supposed to uphold the law. Yeah, and we do, but we can't change people. The truth is, everyone wants the license to get a little dirty now and then. Our job is to keep it manageable. That's how you see it? See it any other way, you better forget about being a vice cop. Can we get on with this today, preferably? All right, let's go take a look around. Tyrone Lamont. 
not even 23 years old. Small chance in life is probably better than no chance. Drifted off, and I suppose his friend wasn't in any condition to notice that he had stopped breathing. Find anything interesting? One cigarette is enough to knock you out for combat trauma. Two of them will stop your heart. Say only the good die young. I hope it was true in your case. Who is JJ? And why do these two care about his taste in music? The plot thickens. I'm, I'm waiting now. They're going through Dead Man's pocket, by the way. I think that's probably a bad thing. And then, like most dead bodies, I guess this will come up at some point. I haven't seen it yet, but most dead bodies, you can pick up the right arm. You can pick up the left arm. Oh, this one's got some. Looks like it was always going to end this way. And then you can also mutz around with their head a little bit. Like, hey. There. Simple, sorry. Another day, another job. Some kind of fruit, a bell, a wing. Strange doodle. Correlation between love of the needle and love of the music. All in my head, music by Andrew Hills. These arms are empty. These hands are cold. If these eyes could hold you, never let you go. The door remains open for you to walk back in. from the Caesar. I'm trying to see if it had something underneath the tape to it still. I don't know if you guys at home will think what I'm thinking, but... Must have been the easiest fix these two ever had. Street life have no idea how dangerous this stuff is. I guess that's the popcorn thing. Well, actually, you know what? That'd be my luck. It'd be the one that I would want to look under and I did. Heavy for an empty cup. 
Oh, yeah, see, look at that. What have been the one? in broad daylight. That's what I, that's what I figured. It doesn't say rock size, but yeah, it's like a cup laying next to the empty wrapper with that, right? The emperor across the street appears to shift a lot of popcorn. Let's shake him down. So I think I have enough from here. Because those audio cues kind of let me know we're going to go jack that dude. I have the chance I will take the opportunity to look up, see if I can find some of you guys' questions. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. I need to go over some All questions. Right. Where to? Oh yeah, sorry. That's waiting on me, huh? As I look at my questions. If you're wondering, if you see our now plans in the past, and you're wondering why I am. Hanging by myself right. and don't have Let's wrap this up people on either side of me. It's because uh, they're doing a podcast right now and all kinds of stuff. It's you're a true it's inspiration to us all, Roy. All kinds of fun today. Uh, I got a question from Ronald McQuarrie. Uh, the question is: Does the gameplay become repetitive? It feels like you're doing the same thing over and over. Um, I'll be honest: with the time I spent with it so far, I haven't. I haven't noticed it, but yeah, check Carolyn's review and uh, see what she Help says you. about that. Detectives Phelps and Earl, LAPD. We're inquiring into the death. Hand over the popcorn, numbskull, before we kick the door in. Get that son of a bitch. All right, so this is one of the other things that does happen in the game, which is the chases. And I'll admit, the chases are awesome. I don't know why, but they are like somehow very thrilling. Oh, and I, I, they always do that. They always kick in the face. Next time I'm just gonna wait. Next time I'm gonna stand at the bottom of the pipe and shoot the dude. And that is something that you can do. Let's see. Oh, I, you know, but you're not, you know, like, it's not like you're just doing anything. So I wonder if I, you know, it's not. Oh, yeah. You don't want to shoot everybody, obviously. You have more, you know, dead men tell no tales, so. I want to know what's going on at the, the Black Caesar. I need to know what this dude knows. Saw the little square button I did there, which is my little my little sway out of the way. Look at that! Oh yeah, dude, you can't even touch me. I'm gonna grapple you now. Grapple you. Oh man, I gotta hold down the L2 button. Whoa! Oh man, I look at me getting all cocky. I gotta focus on the fundamentals. You there we go. Stick with what got me there. Morgan. Half an answer is no answer to me, asshole. Fleetwood Morgan. Keep an eye on him, Roy, while I take a look around. Keep very still, Fleetwood. Don't give me an excuse to shoot you. My, uh, my partner looked pretty excited about the <laughs> prospect of shooting him, so we'll try, hopefully, to, take, to go fast enough to where nothing goes down. Let's see what's going on here. What do I got here? This is uh, some eggs. It's going to help us. All right, it's going to help us. Probably a lot of stuff we go through here in the kitchen. Look for something a little more out of place. What is it? A suitcase. That looks kind of like a. Uh, These number slips might affect your tone, Fleetwood. Obviously, some some illegal gambling on numbers. Let's see about this. It doesn't appear to be connected. Oh, one more item in here. What is this? 
be stamped on the reverse by the issuer. Maybe Morgan can give us something on this Jones character. Well, not an integral clue. It definitely led me to a new point of contact. I'd say point of interest. Let's see what we got over here. Oh, hey. Might not be filling, but I'm sure it's satisfying. About the time we heard what we right. here after the day. So this is uh I think the last thing that you'll see. Which is one of the main pieces of the game, of course, you you do this often, which is of course interrogating your uh we're inquiring about the deaths of two men in an apartment across the street, Fleetwood. We want answers. Of course. I'll do my best, mister. All right, so we're going to ask him about the morphine overdose victims. What can you, you tell us? You sold the drugs to Cornell Tyree and Tyrone Lamont. Oh, I sell... I sell fried steaks and, 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 and black-eyed peas. So, looking a little shifty. Looking a little shifty. I, I doubt that, so, so there's the question, you know, is he outright lying or is he, is he just, you know, am I, am I just doubting him? Uh, there's one of the things that you can do, I'll show you, which is use intuition, right? So if you use intuition, it removes one of the answers. So he is either telling the truth or lying. So between those two answers, I will assume that he is uh, lying to me. You're lying, Fleetwood. We know that you supplied them. I don't know nothing about no drugs. All I do is my ten hair flipping burgers. Can you prove any different? Um, and there's morphine things, so this is like now showing me the list of evidence that I've collected and seen. So those morphine things over there, right, those were morphine, that's the stuff in the box. It's like, really, you walk around that kitchen without seeing that stuff? I think that's what I'm going to go with. I think, uh, yeah, that's just totally what I'm going to go with. Let's see if this is correct. Flipping burgers and strapping jolts of morphine to the bottom of popcorn cups, Fleetwood. Now I want the truth. Who supplies the drugs? Cat by the name of Armstrong Edwards. He brings the stuff around about once a day. I know Armstrong. He's a two-bound, strictly small time. Who's he working for, Fleetwood? Jermaine Jones. All right, we're going to ask him about the number slips recovered. We have you for the hop and resisting arrest. Tell us about the numbers if you want our help. Look, the numbers are the white man's tax on poor folk. All right, now, now what else you want to know? I don't know if I believe him. I've got a bunch of intuition that's not mine, so I'm going to burn it, whatever. <laughs> so we're going to check this. Remove an answer. So it's doubt. So he's definitely not telling the truth. So it's either he, uh, we should doubt him or we, he is lying. I think he is lying. Cut the jive, Fleetwood. You're running your own numbers racket from this food stand. You got the tickets, but you got nothing else. Now how are you going to prove that I run a lottery? I'm gonna say. Unless it's distributor identified. I'm gonna say morphine distribution. Popcorn, cups with morphine, strange doodle. Alright, I'm gonna go. I don't know if this is right. Found numbers of slips and morphine. Morgan Jones is distributor. Let me go check it out. Look, I'll let you in on something. The numbers is ran by white people, Italians, and those Jewish motherfuckers, not black musicians in 50 cent shoes. See you at the station, Fleetwood. Wait, you're gonna help me, right? Of course, kid. You helped us out. And we always like to repay a favor. Did you see that Fleetwood gets a nice cell, Wallace? One with a window and a nice fresh pillow. So this is about the time I'm gonna bow out of our now playing. Uh, I think you've kind of gotten to see pretty much everything that the that the game kind of pushes you through. I mean, there's there's more stuff in there, but uh, you can get the, the bulk of, of how this game goes. Um, 
I, I'm tempted to obviously keep playing, but I don't want to spoil it, so I won't. Uh, the only thing I can think to tell you guys is uh, I do want you. I don't want to leave you guys hanging out there, so I'll tell you what. Maybe I'll, I'll talk to a couple of folks here, and for on the spot, we'll pick up where we left off today for the demo on Thursday. So if you guys want to watch on the spot on Thursday, uh, we'll pick up about here for the demo and, uh, and hopefully see what the, the rest of happens with Black Caesar. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this little bit of taste of uh, L.A. Noir, which is out today. Of course, we're, we're obviously excited about it, and uh, a lot of folks like it. And uh, if you haven't already, check out Carolyn Pettis' review of the game. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. So uh, for everybody here and the, the crew in the studio, uh, thank you so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you again uh, very soon. Actually, I think we're doing this Friday another Now Playing. So if we don't see you tomorrow for our game night and we don't see you Thursday for On the Spot, we'll see you Friday for Now Playing. So thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.